Welcome to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Pavel Shakras, and in today's video, we have two digital pianos. And I've got to be honest, it feels really good to be back in the studio reviewing professional level digital pianos and having them stacked on top of, top of each other like this. It reminds me of what I used to do on the channel a few months back, and it feels really good to be back doing it again. It was one of my favorite things actually to review on the channel. Keyboard comparisons are so fun and in-depth and so interesting to me. Um, and I'm glad to be able to be presenting the Kawaii ES920 in comparison against the Yamaha P515. Now, the Kawaii ES920 is basically a brand new instrument um, that has recently been released just a couple of months ago. I believe it's scheduled to be released in February, that's what I've heard, but yet there are still some available for sale now, and I was actually able to purchase mine a bit early if that February release date is in fact accurate. So here we have the Kawaii ES920, the soon-to-be-released Kawaii digital piano that costs around $1,500, US give or take a few. And on the bottom here, we have the Yamaha P515, which isn't a brand new instrument. It's been out for at least a couple of years, I believe. However, it is still definitely a big contender in that same price bracket, around 1500 US dollars. And if someone was looking for a digital piano within that price bracket, well, these days, these would be two of their most solid options. You have the Kawaii ES920 on top and the P515 from Yamaha on bottom. This comparison is one that people have been asking for ever since the ES920 launched. Um, the ES920 is the successor to the old ES8, which was very much loved by the digital piano community. And I actually own one of those as well. So in the future, I'll do a comparison between the ES920 and the ES8. So if you if you're interested in that, you might want to think about subscribing. And I'll also have a standalone review of just the 920. So if you want to know more about this instrument itself, go check that out. I'm probably going to be a bit more in-depth in that video than I will be in this video because I'm comparing two digital pianos. With that out of the way, let me talk about some of the things that come with these instruments. And one of them that, of course, will come with them is not what you might be expecting me to say, but it's the build quality. What is the build quality and the fit and finish like on both of these instruments? Well. For starters, they're both pretty good, but one, in my opinion, is definitely a lot better than the other. For starters, on the Yamaha, you have a solid metal key front thing here. On a real piano, you'd call this a key slip, so I'll just call it a key slip. Um, you have this solid metal key slip here that has no flex and has a really nice, solid sound to it. Um, and the side panels here are plastic, but they don't feel terribly cheap. They feel quite adequate. They feel solid. The top panel here has a nice faux wood strip here that has a nice solid sound to it. And then the top panel here, I believe, is plastic. But again, it has a nice solid sound to it. And the underside of it is a big solid sheet of some sort of plastic that has a nice quality sound to it. So although there is a lot of plastic in this instrument and not as much metal as you would have found on, say, an old ES8, the build quality still feels good, and it feels like a solid, durable instrument that if it was in some kind of an accident and it fell on the floor or something like that, it would definitely survive. It feels well built. The ES920, though, is a bit of a different story, in my opinion. Your key slip here is plastic, and it feels really cheap and hollow, and it even can flex enough that it can touch the front of the keys. Um, the top panel is plastic, like on the P515, but unlike the P515, it... I don't know, it doesn't quite have the same nice quality feel to it. The speaker grills are big and they are actually made of metal, the little bits up here, so that's cool. The back panel is also plastic, unsurprisingly, and the underside of it is like a hollow sheet of plastic which is really weird. So personally, I'm a little bit disappointed with the build quality of the ES920. I was expecting more. Kawaii historically has had stellar build qualities in their ES line and others as well, like the MP series. And the ES920 is an unprecedented, I guess, low build quality in this series. Now, that's not to say that it's terrible. It's not a horrible build quality. Um, but I was just honestly expecting more, especially for the price point. This type of build quality you're getting here with the hollow plastic um, and the cheap kind of build quality, that's more of what you'd expect from like a seven to $800 digital piano, not something that's 1500 This feels like a quality crafted instrument, and this doesn't quite feel that same way. However, not everything is bad about the ES920, and we'll dive into the awesome sounds and the good action and a few of the other nice features of the ES920 later on in the video. Two more things I wanted to discuss briefly are the music desks that come with these and the damper pedals. I've got the music desks very conveniently here with me. Let me grab the one for the Yamaha here, and as 
as was with the build quality of the Yamaha and this metal key slip here, the bottom plate of this music desk is solid metal and the whole thing has a really solid feel. Because of this metal, it almost would convince you that this part here is made of glass as well, which it isn't. It is plastic um, plexiglass. But because of that solid metal, when you pick this up and you use it, it feels really, really good. And it's obvious that it's going to last a very long time. Plexiglass will yellow over time, so eventually that will happen most likely. Um, but the build quality of this is excellent. Now, just like with the build quality of the instruments themselves, this is the music desk for the ES920. And the first thing I find hilarious is how similar these are. It's like almost like Kawhi just basically went, hmm, the Yamaha P515 looks nice. Let's make these look exactly the same. I can't quite get them to be parallel here. But as you can see here, they look very, very similar. Which one is which? Well, the one with the Yamaha badge is obviously the Yamaha. Um, but the P515 here has the same exact aesthetic, but again, like with the build quality of the instrument, it's cheaper. This bottom plate here, it's just cheap plastic. Once again, it's ABS plastic. So again, we've got a cheaper build quality on the ES920 than the P515. Nothing that I think would really be a deal breaker, but perhaps for some of you who want a really tanky, beefy, good quality digital piano for gigging, you might want to think about the P515 versus the ES920, because I think the durability-wise, the ES920 might not last as long as the P515. Let's talk about damper pedals as well. Let me grab those real quick. Unlike the build quality of the digital pianos and their music desks, the build quality of the damper pedals is actually very well matched. The Yamaha comes with an FC4A damp damper pedal, which is excellent. You've got a solid metal underside and a nice quality feeling plastic up here that's very durable. The only qualm I have with it that's a little weird is you've got these rubber feet which stick well to the floor, but they have these little teeth on them and those teeth point this way. So when you have the pedal on the floor and you're pushing it on your foot, it's going to want to move this way. So what's funny is the damper pedal would rather move this way rather than this way because those feet, the little teeth on here, point the angle like this, if that makes any sense. So if those are flipped around, this thing would never move on a carpet. Um, so that would just be an easy little fix there for Yamaha. But as it already is, it doesn't move around at all, and it works very, very well. It has a little bit of a springier feel, though, than the Yamaha, I mean, the Kawaii pedal over here, which is their F10H. Honestly, I feel like I maybe prefer this one just a little bit. I think the feel of the pedal is a bit better. The build quality, I think, maybe is even better, perhaps, than on the Yamaha. But that's not to say that the Yamaha pedal is bad. They're both excellent. Um, I just maybe have a slight preference towards the Kawaii pedal. It's a really great pedal, and I'm glad to see that this hasn't changed since prior models of the um, ES line. It's a very good pedal, and I hope Kawaii sticks with it for many years to come. So with that all now out of the way, I think it's about time to actually begin to play these instruments. But as you can see, I'm kind of far away from you, and if I'm playing the keys and interacting with the instruments, it might be hard for you to see. So what I'm going to do is actually move the camera in closer, zoom in, get a little tighter of a shot, and make the keyboards be bigger, and then we will begin to play. And like I have in my past videos, and one of my favorite fun things to do on the channel is to switch between the two instruments mid-performance. So I'll play a little bit on here and a little bit up here, and it's going to be really fun. And almost on Honestly, I'm just going to mess around with the two default sounds for a bit. The default sound of the P515 is a replica of their CFX Grand, and up top here on the ES920, it's a replica of their SK Concert Grand. Now, in real life, the CFX and the SKEX are the respective company's flagship acoustic pianos. So it's going to be interesting to see how a digital reproduction of those represents the actual instruments. So let's get into playing these, and I hope you guys enjoy hearing a bunch of music on these two instruments.
So there you have it, the CFX Grand on the P515 and the SK Concert Grand on the Yamaha Kawai ES920. So that is how they sound, and as you can hear, they're both sound very good. And I think that's kind of the takeaway we'll find with this video, is that both of these are quite capable and, and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're both very capable instruments, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, they both have very good piano samples, and I think at this level, it's kind of more personal taste um, as to which one you'd rather prefer, more than which one is inherently better in sound quality uh, with these particular patches. Um, I think they're both excellent, they both serve their purposes, and they're both slightly different. Um, the SK Concert Grand, uh, it, especially through the speakers, it sounds very delicate and dainty, whereas the CFX Grand sounds like it's made for raw power and just really wants to project and get out there. Um, the SK Concert Grand has a very kind of a warm, mellow, extraordinarily resonant sound. Kawhi did a really great job with the resonance, especially up here in the very last couple of octaves. The tone is like perfect. The tone is amazing, and it's very good up here as well. Let me do a quick comparison between the tone of those uh, treble notes. Let's hear how that sounds. As you can hear, the treble tone there is just ethereal in the ES920. It's really heavenly and open and really, really gorgeous. And it sounds good on the Yamaha, but I think for certain things, it's a little bit better on the ES920. I've heard, I've seen some people online saying that they felt that the sound of the ES920 was muddy, and I don't think it's muddy at all. I think that muddiness that some people might be hearing is that incredibly detailed and very realistic resonance, especially up here in the treble. A lot of digital panels don't have that or don't do it as well as these, the, these kawaii pianos do. And so I think for some people, it might take some getting used to learning how to pedal and to to really work that resonance to make it sound really, really good. Another really good piano patch on the P515 is this one down here, the Busendorfer patch. Let me play a little bit of that and compare that against the SK Concert Grand because that's a fan favorite across the internet. The Busendorfer patch is warm and thick and fat and mellow, and it doesn't work great for everything, I'm going to be honest, but for certain types of music like Eric Satie, it is just, that is everything that that, that sample needs to shine. It's really, really gorgeous. So the SK Concert Grand and the CFX and Busendorfer samples on the P515 and ES920 are honestly all really fantastic. Now, there are other piano samples in these instruments, but for the video length's sake, I'm not going to dive into really any of those. The CFX has, I mean, sorry, the P515 has a few less than the ES920. The ES920 has two different banks of different piano sounds. You've got the SK Concert Grand being your first one. You've got the EX being your second. The third one is a Jazz Clean. Fourth one is a Warm Grand. Fifth one is a Pop Grand. And that's all of them in the first category. In the second category, you've got an, another one here. You've got an SK5 Grand Piano. You've got an Upright Piano. You've got a Pop Grand 2. And you've got Modern Piano or Rock Piano and then back around to the SK-5. Whereas this uh, P515 only has the CFX, the Busendorfer, Studio Grand, Bright Grand, Ballad Grand, Warm Grand, Pop Grand, Jazz Grand, 
rock grand, and finally, honky tonk piano forte. So those are all the ones, uh, the, all the piano sounds, and honestly, they're all pretty good. Especially in the case of the ES920, they all kind of pale in comparison to that first sound because that first sound is so amazing, in my opinion. But that's not to say that the other piano sounds of the ES920 are bad. I just like the default sound so much that that's honestly the only one I ever use. Another sound category of the ES920 is the electric pianos, and this has those types of sound as well. But before we dive into that, I figured I'd talk about a few things about these instruments, the playing experience and a couple of other things, like the speakers. So the internal speakers of both are quite nice. Um, to a certain extent. The P515 has a lot more volume. When you're playing that CFX sample and you're hitting it really loud, it rivals the volume of a real acoustic piano. It's very impressive. And the ES920 has a bit of a more a thin, clear, dainty type of sound, but it still has some volume behind it. The only issue is that the distortion in certain tones, especially like electric pianos, the low bass notes, and especially with organs, you get a lot of distortion out of the speakers. This is true for both of them. I feel like that wasn't quite as true when I first got my P515, or perhaps I just simply didn't play the same things. What happened was when I got my ES920 and I was messing around with it, I noticed certain things triggered the speakers and made them act up. And when I do those same things on the P515, the same things happen. Sometimes to a lesser degree, sometimes to a greater degree. The sounds are different, the speakers are different, so they behave in slightly different ways. But you will get some distortion with low bass organ notes and low bass uh, electric piano notes. But that is what it is. That seems to be kind of a standard thing with a lot of digital pianos. I would like to see that improved. Um, for the price you're paying for these, you really shouldn't be getting any distortion, especially because these speakers are loud enough to probably be used in some small live settings. Um, if you're playing it for uh, some kind of a recital for 10, 15, 20 people, the speakers in this alone would probably fill the room just adequately enough for people to hear it. So you wouldn't really want distortion on these. Um, but again, in a live situation, if you're playing for something bigger, you'd probably be running these into a PA system, an amplifier, and bypassing the internal speakers or using them for monitoring for your own purposes. So it's kind of give or take. It is what it is. Um, but that is the internal speaker situation. They're louder on the P515, they're a little more clean and dainty up here on the ES920. But in both cases, they do the job. The other thing I wanted to talk about is the action. The action of both of these is very, very nice. The Yamaha down here actually has wooden sided keys, which is really, really great. And so that gives these keys a more heavy, more, uh, what's the word, a heavier, kind of a more realistic feel. Whereas the ones up here kind of almost feel more liquid. These ones feel very solid and very planted. When you play them, even when you're playing fast passages, you feel locked in. The keys know exactly what you want to do. But up here on the ES920, they feel a little bit more, what's the word, wishy-washy kind of? It, they feel a little bit more loose. And that's not necessarily because of the action. It is and it isn't. That same feeling of having kind of a, a loose action is the same feeling I get when I play a real acoustic piano that has a light action compared to one that has a heavier action. I personally find heavier actions to be more controllable, especially when they respond well, and that is the case with this P515. Although it is a bit heavier than the ES920, it responds very, very quickly. You can do trills, tremolos, turns, all that stuff very, very quickly and very easily on the P515, although there probably is a little bit more of a learning curve and adjustment in learning how to get the most out of the action of this versus the action of this. The action of the ES920 is very light, it's very fluid, it's very flowing, and it also has no issues playing any type of music. I just prefer playing faster, loud music on the P515, and that's my personal preference. Um, the other thing I wanted to discuss here is the noise the action makes. If we play some notes with the volume off on both of these pianos, um, and you just listen to the sound the keys themselves are making, um, what you will hear is that one of them is particularly quieter than the other. And let's just have a listen here. So there you have that. As you can hear, the downward attack, the sound that the key makes when it hits the key bed bottom, is about the same on both. Actually, it's quieter on the uh, Kawai. And that's a very acceptable level of noise. I don't have any problem with that. What I do have a problem with is the way the keys bounce on the ES920. And that's not because I'm playing you know, six different keys and they're all coming up at a slightly different time. If I do the same thing down here, no bounce. It's very quiet when it comes up. So that is something that this particular action, the RH3 from Kawhi, has dealt with for many years. I'm kind of surprised that 
that people that Kawhi hasn't fixed it. I'm not the only one who's complained about the bounce and the noise that this action makes, but that's really its only flaw that I can think of. Other than that, it's very, very great to play, and it feels wonderful to play. So let's move on now to the electric piano category, and I'm going to do something similar like I did for the piano. I'm just going to run through them all. I'm going to try to match them up because both of them have road sounds, both of them have whirly sounds, both of them have DX sounds, and I'm going to try to match them up to each other. The ES920 has more Rhodes sounds than the um, P515 does, so some of them may not match up to each other, but I will do my best to go through here and find all the matching sounds and compare them to each other. So let's start off here with the stage electric piano and the classic electric piano on both of these. It's a Fender Rhodes type sound. Let's hear how it sounds. So that is the sounds of the electric pianos of the P515 and the ES920. I think I covered all of them there. Like I said, they don't all quite match up. There's a couple of extras of the DX sound on the P515, and there's a couple extra road sounds up here, but I tried to match them to their equivalents. Um, so you can hear that, in my opinion, I think a lot of the electric piano sounds of the Kawaii are a little bit better. The road sounds a little bit more gritty, and it has a little bit extra noises in there that make it sound a little bit more authentic. Neither of them are really any replacement placement for real Fender Rhodes, obviously, but I think, in my opinion, the ES920 sounds a little bit better overall than the 
P515 in this particular sound category. I particularly like the, uh, what's it called, the soft EP on the P515, the one with that really slow auto pan. That's a really good one um, down here on the P515. And up here on the ES920, probably my favorite one is the 60s electric piano, the first version of it, the one I ended performing on uh, in that last bit. That's probably my favorite electric piano sound of the ES920. It's like a Wurlitzer 200A type of sound. Very fat, very warm, and really, really nice sounding. The next category here is probably the weakest of both of these keyboards, and that would be the organ category. The organ category isn't the idea or the goal of these instruments. They're digital pianos, not digital organs. So it does make sense that the organ category would be the weakest and have some of the weakest sounds. Once again, I think the ES920 is a little bit better in some regards in this category than the P515, but in another regard, the P515 is the ES920 is no competition for it in other categories. So let me play a couple of chords on each organ sound of each instrument. Again, there's actually six organ sounds up here and five organ sounds up here, so they aren't going to quite line up, so they won't really be trying to emulate the same type of organ all the time. But I'll just give you a taste of what they sound like, and uh, you guys can hear how that sounds. So those are the organ sounds of the P515 and the ES920, and in my opinion, the tone wheel organs are a little bit better on the ES920 than they are on the uh, the P515, but the pipe organ sounds are dramatically better on the P515 than they are on the ES920. And I realize that people aren't buying these for the pipe organ sounds, but it's still kind of fun, especially that last one on the P515, the organ tutty. It's really, really fat and rich and big sounding, and it sounds really great. Um, whereas the last one of the Kawai was just hilariously cheesy and sounds like a sound file from the 90s. So there you go. Those are the organ sounds of both of them. In my opinion, it's not really the strong point of either of them, but on the Yamaha, the pipe organ sounds are really great, and on the Kawai ES920, the tone wheel sounds are pretty good. For some reason, on the Kawai, the organ sounds are shifted down an octave, as you could hear. That kind of threw me off a bit. I'm not really sure why but they are. So there you have it. Up next is kind of a bit of a miscellaneous category for both of these instruments. Um, this uh, On the Kawai, it's labeled harpsichord and mallets, and on the bottom, it's labeled simply clavinet and vibraphone. So we're going to check that out in just a moment here. Thank uh you. -huh. 
So those are all the sounds in the clavinet, vibraphone, harpsichord, mallet section of these instruments. And as you can see, it's basically the same thing. The ES920 has a marimba thrown in there, and it's a pretty nice sounding artificial marimba at that. And other than that, they're basically the same. You've got two different variants of the harpsichord down here. You've got an electric clavichord or clavinet on both of them, and then you've got the lovely vibraphone. Honestly, everything in here is pretty good. I think the harpsichord samples down here are a bit better than up here on the ES920, but other than that, those two sound uh, groups are pretty pretty equivalent in my opinion. Up next we have the strings and choir section. I think it's a bit bigger on the P515 than on the ES920, but I'm not really sure. I haven't even looked into comparing these two in depth, so I'm doing it live on camera right now. So the first default sound here is just a strings sound. I know that that one is a lot different on the P515 versus the ES920. Up top it's more of a strings pad, and down here it's more of like a, not a solo string, but it kind of has those vibes. It's like a smaller group of instruments. So I'm going to scroll through all of these. They aren't going to line up to each other, but I'm going to go through all of them and just play back and forth and scroll through all the different sounds, and you guys can check out what they sound like. So those are the strings and pad section of both of these instruments, and once again, they're pretty equivalent. It's not the main focus of these instruments, and both of them I think are pretty good. I like the string sounds of the ES, I mean, sorry, of the P515 more than the ES920, um, but both of them I think are fine. The final category here is basses. Um, the Yamaha has a couple of extra guitar ones thrown in here, but most of these are basses. The basses are in a different order, so I'm going to try to make them line up. So, you know, upright acoustic bass and electric bass and things like that. So let me cue that up real quick here, and then once I do so, there we go. Let's hear how they sound.
So there you have it. Those are all of the sounds of the P515 and the EOS 920, at least all of the main ones. There's actually a bunch of hidden sounds in the P515 that you can access as well, but for the sake of the length of this video, I'm actually not going to dive into any of those. But from my understanding, those are often... Uh, those sounds were often used in previous Yamaha models, such as the DGX series and stuff, and so there's actually a lot of hidden sounds within this instrument. Now I think it's time to talk about some of the other smaller nuances of these instruments, like transposing and splitting and the recorder, because both of these have a built-in recorder. Now the one that's built into the Yamaha is a lot more simple and a lot less feature-packed than the one up here for the 920. The 920, you can not only um, stop and record and reverse back to the beginning, but you can also actually fast-forward and rewind, and there's even even an A, B looper, but it's definitely not perfect. And down here on the P515, you can simply just make recordings and listen back to them. But up here, there's a little bit more functionality, but like I said, it's flawed. Um, I'll cover that in my full review of the Kawaii ES920, the issue I have with the AB looper. So if you want to see more of that, check out that video. Both of them also have a rhythm section as well, um, which have accompaniment modes to the one for the Kawaii is a bit more lavish. It has more accompaniments, whereas the one for the P515 simply just has a single root bass note, which I prefer because in my opinion, the accompaniments for the Kawaii ES920 kind of get in the way of what you're actually trying to play. Fortunately, turning off the accompaniments is as simple as hitting that button right there. Um, and on the P515, you have to dive into a menu to turn off that single bass note, which doesn't really get in the way and hardly is noticeable. So you can go do that if you want. That's the thing with the P515. To do a lot of things in it, you have to dive into a lot of different menus. Neither of the menu functions on these instruments are perfect. They both have their strange little um, things. Um, but you do have to do some menu diving in both of these. I think there's a bit more of that on the P515. The ES920 also has a better screen as well. It's this really nice, I believe it's an OLED display that has really great viewing angles and you can see it from every angle. It's very bright, the contrast is great. And although this uses one of those older like LCD, LED style displays that people have been using for years, it is one of the better ones, if not the best ones on the market. And I don't have any major issues with this. This just has a bit of a more modern, higher class aesthetic to it. Um, you've got a metronome built in, like I said. Um, let's see here. How do you turn it on on the here we go? So on the P5 and 5, you've got a metronome, which is very nice. On the ES110, you've got a metronome. Very simple. The ES1, I, I call it the 110. The ES920 uh, defaults to having that ping at the beginning, whereas the P515 does not have the ping. A lot of people prefer that, myself included. Uh, what else is there that I want to talk about? This has a piano room, which allows you to change the lid position of the piano, the brightness of the hammers, uh, the, what else? Is that it? No, the touch sensitivity, the reverb of the hall, the reverb depth, the master tuning of the instrument, the VRM, damper resonance, string resonance, aliquot resonance, body resonance, all these things. And this actually does the same sort of things. If you go into the menu, you hit val, actually no, you hit menu a couple of times. There we go. You hit it once and you get virtual technician. Then when you hit value, which is kind of like your enter, then you can come in here and change your touch curve. You can change the voicing, the damper resonance, the damper noise, the string resonance, the undamped resonance, the cabinet resonance, key off effect, fallback noise, hammer noise, hammer delay, top board open positions, decay time, release time, minimum touch, equal temperament and your change of temperament, the stretch tune, the sensitivity curve, and then a few other things. So there's a lot of customization in both of these. Now, unfortunately, the, and this applies to both of these, I believe, because um, when you hit the piano room, it takes you to a piano sound on the P515. And the virtual technician functions are only available from the best of what I can tell on the piano sounds. Um, the electric pianos, although they do have hammer fallback noise and hammer delay that in higher end models like the MP11, you can alter. On this one, you can't alter those with the electric pianos, at least from what I tested. I tried to reduce the hammer fallback noise in the default roads using the virtual technician, and it simply didn't work, which is okay. The the extra noises, the extraneous, you know, hammer noises and stuff are perfectly dialed in, in my opinion, on the ES920. The only thing that might be a little bit too loud maybe would be the noise that the dampers make when you push the pedal. But it's definitely not offensive, and you can go in there and turn it down if you wish. 
That, I think, is practically everything that I wanted to say about the P515 and the ES920. They are two very similar digital pianos, and in my opinion, it's a little bit clear to me, in my opinion, that Kawhi has definitely taken some leads from Yamaha. Um, at this point, digital pianos have kind of reached, what's the word I'm looking for, like a continuity. Every digital piano will have the same sorts of features and will, in a sense, look the same, kind of like how modern cars all have the same kind of a shape in most cases because they're all trying to achieve maximum aerodynamicness, if that makes any sense. So they all kind of have a similar shape, at least consumer level cars do. And it's kind of the same way with digital pianos. They all have the same functions, they all have the same features, and after a certain point, they all kind of start being the same. For example, on the ES920, you've got two headphone jacks right here, and on the P515, oops, you've got two headphone jacks right here. Difference is you've got a mini jack and a quarter inch jack. Here you've only got two quarter inch jacks, so that's a little bit of a nice quality of life change up here. Both of these have a panel lock function. If you look up here at the panel of the instrument, you'll see that the two right hand most buttons, excluding the volume slider and the power button, if you push both of them at once, you'll get panel lock, which means you can push buttons and change whatever, and nothing will actually change on the instrument. The two right hand most buttons on the P515, if you push them at the same time, you get the panel lock. So there's certain things, and then the music desk design that it's very, very similar, and the all black aesthetic of both of them with the speakers on the side and the little strip here that's, you know, separating the speakers from the keys. You know, there's a lot of things about these that make them very, very similar. Um, and that's why people have wanted me to compare them because they they occupy the same niche in the mar niche niche they occupy the same area in the digital piano market they do many of the same things and so that is what I wanted to cover in today's video the P515 versus the ES920 so which one's better for you well honestly they're both pretty close I'm not even sure which one I would lean to more. I really, really love the SK Concert Grand piano sample of the ES920, but the Busenerfer and CFX are really good as well. I prefer the action for most things on the P515, honestly. The action of the ES920 is not quite perfect. You've got that noise issue. You've also got the fact that the the let off kind of creates a gummy feeling towards the very bottom of the key when you're trying to play pianissimo as possible. Not a massive issue, um, but at least not as bad as it was before on previous versions of the RH3 action, but it's definitely noticeable in the RH3 action. That's why Nord in their Nord Grand, which uses this same action, the only thing they changed that everyone can tell on the internet is removing that fake let off little rubbery thing that makes the let off feel, if that makes any sense. Um, so that basically is the P515 versus the ES920. Honestly, I feel like it's mostly up to personal preference. I like both of them. They both have the equal amount, in my opinion, of benefits and drawbacks. They are honestly probably the two most equivalent digital pianos in the market today, which honestly is great for both because the P515 I absolutely loved, and the old ES8 I definitely liked, and the fact that the ES920 is actually, I think, um, competing even tighter with the P515 is definitely a good sign for Kawhi. Build quality I'd like to see improved, and the action I'd like to see finally improved after all these years, but as a whole, the ES920 is a pretty solid instrument, and I don't think you'd really be able to go wrong with it, and the same thing could be said for the P515. That's finally everything I wanted to say. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, you might want to go check out my channel. I've got lots of cool videos of acoustic pianos, digital pianos, and all kinds of other neat things, and if you want to see an in-depth comparison between the ES920 and its predecessor, the ES8, definitely go check out my channel. I'll also have a standalone video of the ES920 where I go a little bit more in-depth about things. So hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel. If you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.